let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that your name be glorified as we continue to grow in our faith, as we continue to know, love you, and serve you, as we continue to do what you call us to do. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. We're continuing in uh, 1 Corinthians 3. We're now at 18 through 23. And here is where St. Paul is talking about not being wise in this age, but to become, well, he says fools so that you may become wise. Maybe, well, we can use those terms, but we can also recognize humility as part of this. Now, what, what does this mean? Well, it means simply don't be wise in this age that you become blind to the faith. And that's what it is all about. But when you embrace the faith on top of reason, don't forget, we believe in faith and reason. But whereas people who reject the faith believe in reason alone. But if you really want to carry that to its nth degree, you can carry that right up to, as I was saying earlier in the week, Friedrich Nietzsche. Friedrich Nietzsche believed in reason alone, and his le- reason became distorted. So because his reason became distorted, he created great distortions in reason, and therefore he created the whole idea that we can now build our own morality, we can do everything new now, we can change everything. And Hitler took that to the nth degree and created the the whole Nazi system, which led to the Holocaust and the full genocide. And so when we look at that and we understand all of that, we recognize that yeah, reason without faith doesn't necessarily have to turn into uh, Nazism. That's obviously that's true that it doesn't necessarily turn into Nazism, but reason without faith will also be blind to the deeper truths of humanity. Faith without reason will understand the deeper truths, but not understand the uh, how to apply those within the context of reason. So you see, you need both. One of the things I, I always bring up, uh, which, you know, th- this is one of my philosophies, reason without faith brings the Holocaust and genocide. Faith without reason brings the Inquisition. And in a sense, there they actually have the same ends. So keep that in mind. Faith without reason brings the Inquisition. Reason without faith brings the Holocaust and genocide. So you want to have faith and reason. But people who reject faith, only embracing reason, look at what we do is stupid. And I, I told you that that uh, Twitter feed the other day from uh, in support of one of our political parties said that anyone who converts to Catholicism as an adult is insane. There you go. And members of that party, which I have not mentioned the name of that party, members of that party, I have personally experienced hate Catholics, hate Catholics. Catholic. So you need to know that. And and they consider what we do, uh, well, it says it, insane and foolish. Well, one of the reasons is because we have a whole different context of what we believe in terms of life and what the teachings of the church are and where they come from and everything else. And so we understand all that and we recognize that. And this is the exact principle that St. Paul is saying that in that principle, St. Paul is making it clear that faith without reason, or rather, I'm sorry, reason without faith uh, looks at faith as just foolishness. Oh, those people believe in Jesus. Oh, boy. And and that's what happens. And St. Paul says, the Lord makes them look foolish. And it's true. When, you know, sometimes we're, you know, people will say, well, I told you that philosophy teacher, I mean, here he was, I just looked upon him as saying he just doesn't get it and he can't get it because he just dismisses religion altogether because he, he is an atheist who teaches a form of atheist philosophy. If you want to see a great example of this, this is going to get philosophers mad at me, but if you want to see a great example of this, study Bertrand Russell, Bertrand Russell or you know, Bertrand Russell was an intense atheist, 
And although this stuff has been censored, it's been taken off YouTube, but he was asked by Mike Mike Wallace, if you can look it, at, look it up, if you can find it anywhere, because it's been censored off of YouTube. But uh, if, if what the Nazis did was evil, and he could not define that because he didn't necessarily believe in good and good and evil because he was an atheist so he wouldn't say that he wouldn't say whether this was evil what the nazis did and remember this is the 1950s not too long after the whole aspect of nazi germany and so you look at that and you, and you can look at that and saying is this guy kidding is this guy, you know, what is this guy? And that was Bertrand Russell, a major force of atheism in the 20th century. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE 590 AM. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. Life can be challenging, but amidst the trials and tribulations, there is wisdom to be found. Welcome to Sirach 2, a chapter filled with timeless guidance and insights from the book of Sirach. In this chapter, we learn the importance of remaining steadfast in our faith, even in the face of adversity. It teaches us to be patient, for trials can shape our character and lead to spiritual growth. Seeking wisdom and understanding is of utmost importance. Sirach 2 reminds us to study the teachings of the wise, be open to correction, and follow God's commandments. By doing so, we can find true fulfillment and blessings. Don't be discouraged by the temporary prosperity of the wicked or the challenges you may face. Trust in God's justice, for he rewards those who diligently seek him. Join us on this journey of faith as we discover the path to a meaningful and fulfilling life. Sirach 2 is your roadmap to wisdom, patience, and eternal blessings. Read Sirach 2 and let its timeless wisdom guide you through life's ups and downs. Available now in the book of Sirach, part of the Old Testament. Brought to you by the voice of St. Anthony Parish in Alston. We're back and we're talking about... Um, this reality of the faith and reason, how we need a combination of both. And um, those who reject faith but embrace only reason, uh, they, w- w- when you understand faith and reason, the, the, uh, St. Paul says that they uh, will be made foolish. And you can see that in a lot of things. And I'm not going to mention any um, any a- atheists that are currently living. I mentioned Bertrand Russell, who is uh, a notorious atheist throughout the 20th century. Um, and you can, again, read his stuff. You can look up his stuff anytime you want. You can see him on YouTube, but know some of his stuff has been censored. Uh, and because he absolutely rejected anything to do with faith. One of the things he came up with was uh, the Russell's teapot. And uh, Richard Dawkins uses it as well. And what it basically says is that you can believe that there is a teapot somewhere between Earth and Mars in space, but you can't see it. You can't prove it exists, but you can believe in it if you want. And as far as you're concerned, it exists, but you have no proof. And that was Russell's teapot, which is an incredibly ignorant statement if you think about it. Because this misses the whole intense factor of what we believe. Now, one of the things that you've heard me say, and I know some people within the evangelical and even the Catholic communities do not believe in evolution, Evolution disproves atheism. I've said that all along because evolution proves that we are limited in what we can see and what we can perceive. And therefore, because we're limited, Jesus gives us more uh, through revelation of what we can't understand, but what he educated us about. And this is something that Uh, obviously Bertrand Russell did not understand. So let's go back to that question. Was what the Nazis did evil? Well, of course it was. But let me go another step. If you understand evil in big ways, 
you understand evil in little ways. And when you understand someone saying something that is, well, I'll go back to what I said yesterday. You know, there are people saying this horrendous thing that uh, Michelle Obama is actually a man. And among the people who said that was Archbishop Vigano, who is now excommunicated from the church. You know what? That is a, a breaking one of the commandments because it's bearing false witness. Okay. So in light of that, it's bearing false witness. And you might say, well, yeah, but the Nazis did something so much bigger than something like that. Yes, they did. But the bottom line is evil starts in little ways and grows into big ways, slowly one step at a time. So you start believing and thinks that's not a uncharitable statement to make, you're eventually going to grow in your uncharitable statements and other forms of evil as well. Let's take it another way. We as Catholics believe that God created all human beings, and we believe in that through what the Bible teaches. Now, we may believe in evolution, which as you know, I do, but that doesn't mean that God didn't create humanity. Therefore, Start with little ways. Oh, let's start with the little Jim Crow laws, turn them into big ways, which turn to full-fledged discrimination, even to the point that I was thinking of this the other day. Do you know when Captain Kirk kissed um, uh, Lieutenant Aruru, Arura? I, pardon me if I don't pronounce, pronounce the name correctly. That was a major thing on TV because a white man kissing a black woman. Do you think how stupid it was that... That was a big thing, but that's the way people were. <gasps> we can't have that. Well, you better get used to it. And really fascinating. We're going to talk more tomorrow. Have yourself a blessed day. We'll see you then. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com. And you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out catholictv.com. Remember, when you're looking for a place to attend Mass, and if you don't already attend Mass at your local parish, come to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We're located at 43 Holton Street in Alston, just a few blocks up from Soldiers Field Road. And you can check us out. Come to our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass and come to experience our Catholic worship at St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts.